Hey wine snobs, welcome to another edition of Off the Beaten Path. You know, typically being off the beaten path for me involves going out to wine country here in Northern California, which we're so blessed to have a lot of, um, and seeking out those little boutique artisan wineries that you would otherwise never hear of. Um, usually making magic in a bottle, art in a bottle off the beaten path. That's perhaps the biggest reward of uh, what I do here. But every once in a while, someone reaches out to me off the beaten path, far away. And this is one of those times, one of those instances. I have here with me tonight, a Chardonnay from Chile. I was fortunate enough to uh, have received this for, to, for a good look on here and I'm excited tonight. Um, recently, I've been exploring Chilean wines, especially from the Colchagua Valley. I discovered that through one of you who suggested that earlier this year when I put some questions out on Instagram. And one of the regions that I asked what regions to explore next, and one of the regions that uh, one of my readers suggested was Colchagua Valley. Prior to that, I'd never heard of it. And uh, so I, embarked on this journey and I found some amazing wines which have ended up in the cellar building verticals of those. Uh, La Postola comes to mind. Um, but this uh, I suspect is going to be a real treat. Um, this is from Atacama. So I'm really excited about it. I used to read about this region in world history books, antiquity. Um, so it's really exciting to explore that and not only is it from an intriguing region for me, a lesser known part of the world for wine that is, um, it's also truly an artisan wine. Um, this Chardonnay is a 2016 unfiltered, hand bottled and for all intents and purposes handcrafted just like most of the wines that I obsess over. <laughs> I love the wax seal that gets me every time. Doesn't really matter, but I just like it. Um, gives it a bit of a personal touch. The varietal is 100% Chardonnay, and uh, the soil uh, says the soils in the second and third terraces of the river Huasco are alluvial and calcareous, complemented by a significant level of salinity and a faithfully and is faithfully reflected in the wine so i anticipate some minerality in this wine this sounds really interesting uh, the harvest is a 2016 vintage in the north of chile um, let's see here uh, fermentation was 50 percent of the grapes were left as whole clusters the grapes were pressed by foot that's a lot of work no products were added to the must. All the must was fermented with ambient yeast and stainless steel barrels. This is kind of gutsy for a winemaker to take an entire harvest. There's a bit of a risk there. Um, there's no guarantees the natural yeasts are going to do their job, uh, least of all to completion. So uh, that's admirable and laudable. So. <laughs> I'm more excited, even more excited to see what this is like. Um, the wine was aged for 21 months in stainless steel barrels in order to retain the identity of the place the grapes come from, the Atacama Desert. The Atacama Desert. This may be the first desert wine I've had. <laughs> uh, the technical data is alcohol by volume is 12.5%. That's right up my alley. I like low alcohol wine. It gives me a chance to explore the wine and approach the wine, take my time and enjoy it from start to finish. I feel like wines with higher alcohol become overbearing and so far off balance that the winemaker probably spends most of his time trying to wrestle it back into something palatable. By the second glass, my palate's pickled and it becomes less enjoyable, not to mention the buzz. I'm not too excited about that part of high alcohol wines. 
Um, one of the big benefits of low alcohol wines is you can pick out the nuances even better. And for me, that's really important. I like to understand the wines, especially when they're artisan wines. Now, if I'm enjoying wines with friends, nah, I guess it's fine. It's not a big deal. But a wine such as this, I like it to have low alcohol. And so that's nice. pH is 3.15. Acidity is uh, 7.4. And uh, sugar, residual sugar is uh, 1.5 grams per liter. So I anticipate it may actually be fairly dry, um, which I like. I prefer that over the alternative. Um, aging potential, this wine can be stored for up to 10 years in optimum conditions. Uh, that seems in line with what I've seen so far. Um, so without further ado, let's dive in. Again, this is the Tara, Tara from Atacama, Atacama Valley. All right. We'll cut off the wax seal here. Let me take my time so as not to cut myself. <laughs> I do this, but not often enough to have it down. So, but obviously, often enough to do a clean job at it. All right. Let's see here. You can't beat a waiter's cork screw this wine opener indispensable tool for any wine enthusiast there's a lot of fancy contraptions gadgets and gizmos out there but nothing beats this <laughs> especially um, the articulated ones that have a little tab that allows you to do the first pull gently and the second pull All right, cork's intact. It still is young, only four years old. So that's nice. They sent two bottles. So the plan is to explore this one today in 2020, summer of 2020, end of summer 2020, and then make some notes and some determina determination on when next to open the second bottle and do a follow-up review. Um, so that's typically what I do. Um, I usually uh, request at least two bottles so I can do follow-up reviews. Um, I'm interested if how I feel and how it tastes tonight, how it shows tonight, if it will resonate with uh, uh, their, rec their suggestion that it could be stored for up to 10 years. If so, we are only six years away, so that would put us in 2026. So we'll see, we'll keep that in mind. So um, in case you're wondering, I'm using a self aerating glass. It's usually for reds, but in this case, uh, I'm using it because I want to quickly open up the wine and unlock the aromas so I can speak to them in the moment now and any further details I'll have in the blog post linked below. Um, while it may not unlock the entire wine, um, it does try to accelerate the process. I am after all on camera and I have to glean as much insights as possible from this wine um, within the 10 and 15 odd minutes that I give myself for these. Very nice color, golden, clear golden color. And if you can tell that in camera, we'll do some close ups. Very nice color. There's a very subtle cloudiness. And I, I believe that's due to the fact that it's unfiltered. So it will come with some sediment. When it arrived, it was actually fairly cloudy. 
I probably didn't help that uh, there was a little bit higher temperatures when it was delivered. Um, but given some time to settle, probably it's been setting for about uh, a week or so, um, it definitely cleared up. So let's see the nose. Oh. Has a very nice aromatic nose. There is some mushroom, which is interesting. There's, uh, there's sort of a sort of a, a sharp. It's not quite cedar wood. Um, it's a sharp, almost like redwood essence. And it's it's secondary, not primary, but up up front, this plays with sort of a mushroom type of essence, creating a leather that hits you up front first. That's unusual for uh, your typical Chardonnay. Um, they don't tend to uh, really embody terroir uh, and environment so much as much. Um, probably has to do with just the varietal, but also the process. Um, they spend less time integrating um, and make it to bottle much quicker. They're meant to be drank a lot quicker. This one obviously has had time to, to integrate and I can see that really shining down the road once it really um, figures out its direction, its final direction. That's interesting. I always like it, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'll be honest, I, I don't indulge much in white wines, but when a white wine, such as a Chardonnay especially, um, possesses a leather to it, it gets my attention. I like that a lot. Some people don't, but I like that a lot. There's some berries in the back. You swirl vigorously. faintest hint of cantaloupe but the leather just dominates the front of the nose there um, that's that's really interesting I love it Let's go for the body. Oh, wow. You know, after reading the specs um, and looking at that nose, I expected a, at least a moderately acidic attack on it. But no, it's actually balanced right down the middle from start to finish, front to back. Um, that wood leather essence comes through on the body as well. It's just as pronounced. What little fruit there is in the nose almost vanishes in the body. Um, it is fairly dry. However, it's the edges, you know, usually they come with um, most Chardonnay come with this acidic and sometimes tannic uh, sharp edge to the body. 
that's been completely rounded out and uh, it's created this silky full mouth feel um, which actually towards the back of the body just moves front and center and dominates it actually wets the palate pretty well um, it keeps you drooling <laughs> usually that your palate's left parched but uh, this one actually leaves it fairly moist Oh, that is really nice. This is really nice. The finish, transition to finish, is fairly smooth and seamless. Um, very unceremonious. It just fades gently off the palate. I would say, you know, as you, some wines will leave your palate parched, dry, have a tannic grip, maybe spicy. This doesn't at all. It just leaves your palate moist if anything <laughs> drooling <laughs> there's several other secondary and tertiary notes those will probably come to light as i continue exploring this this evening um, However, this is an amazing Chardonnay. This is very interesting, a pleasant surprise. Wow. From the Atacama Desert. That's wild. I'm really impressed. <laughs> I'm really impressed. You know, uh, it just goes to show you can't know everything about wine and uh, you know we are truly living in a golden age of winemaking you know globally where not only has knowledge been disseminated for centuries now uh, you know so many regions around the world have developed you know um, their own traditions and craft we're also in a logistical age where, you know, an amazing wine such as this can make it here to California safely and intact. And I can explore it here tonight is just incredible. And all of this comes together. And this is what leads me to often say we truly are in a golden age of winemaking where some little known winemaker in some lesser known corner of the world is toiling away making amazing wine and you can enjoy it that's incredible I'm going to have to add this to the cellar <laughs> I don't know how much it cost um, there'll be links on the blog on how to order uh, but uh, I think this is a showpiece, um, a very interesting conversation piece. Um, definitely worth adding to your cellar and following. Um, 2016 Chardonnay from Atacama Desert, Chile, Tara. Bien hecho, amigos. Beautiful aromatic nose greets with lots of leather, more specifically a mushroom woody leather, unlike anything else I've tasted. I can't quite pinpoint it exactly, but it is reminiscent of redwood and cedarwood. There are faint distant hints of black licorice. Berries and a touch of cantaloupe make an appearance as secondary and tertiary notes. Amazing. Body is surprisingly balanced front to back. Acidity is restrained, precisely balanced by buttery, creamy tannins in the form of subtle white cherries. This creates a full, lush, silky, luxurious, weighted mouthfeel. The terroir and leathery notes remain front and center, as in the nose, 
but reveal their mineral underpinnings towards the back in the form of a slight chalky slate. Once opened up, this minerality becomes increasingly pronounced both in the body and nose. Transition to finish is seamless as it quickly vanishes over the palate. Unlike most Chardonnay, which leave your palate dry and tingling with spice, this one's hallmark is an absolutely drenched, wet, moist, drooling palate. At 12.5% alcohol by volume, you can take your time and enjoy it without experiencing any palate fatigue. This is a fine wine by all accounts. An impressive feat considering it was fermented in whole clusters using only naturally occurring yeast and pressed by foot, unfiltered, simply wild. I am absolutely floored by this Chardonnay. I need to look into this winemaker's work and this region at large. It has truly been an honor and a pleasure to get a look at this wine. Have you had any wines from Chile? Please share them with me in the comments below. Um, if you enjoyed this review, if this review and this wine resonated with you, please like and subscribe. If you have any other ideas on wines you'd like us to explore, drop them in the comments below. You can also connect with me on Instagram at winesnob.blog, on Twitter at winesnobblog, or you can also visit the blog at www.winesnob.blog I would love to hear from you and if you have any other Chilean gems that I can explore I would like that very much please share them with me feel free to contact me in any way that uh, is convenient to you and uh, let me know what you're having out there let me know what hidden gems I haven't found yet I'm excited to hear from you guys um, any feedback is welcome and uh, I hope you're sipping something interesting. Tara, a magical place in northern Chile, invites you to com contemplate the silence and immersity of the Atacama Desert. This unique terroir receives the influence of the coastal fog known as Kamanchaka. I hope I said that right. Yielding a great wine of singular expression. I would agree. Cheers, wine snobs. <laughs>